Well, it's been about 18 months since I set out on a journey that I didn't know would end so quickly. I'm talking about my transition from working on an Intel Mac to working completely on Apple Silicon now. That transition is complete. And I'm no longer afraid of finally getting rid of my Intel iMac from underneath my desk. It's just behind me now. I gotta figure out what to do with it. Love that iMac. However, there is a caveat, as there always is, and I was able to transfer all my developer-related workflows to Apple Silicon ARM architecture, and I'll go into what those workflows are in a bit, except for one, but I have a feeling I'm close on that one too. Now, I know there's lots of different types of software developers out there, so the tasks and workflows that I'll be talking about are my own. I do have my fingers in a lot of different pies, as you might have noticed from this channel, but there's a lot more pies out there that I don't have my fingers fingers and that's that's really weird <laughs> drop a comment down below and let me know what stack you're working with maybe i'll add it to my future machine tests all right so getting back to my particular workflows mobile let's talk about that for a moment i use native script to develop apps for ios and for android you end up with a fully native app so you need the native development tools like xcode and android studio both of which are fully supported on arm now and native script uses the v8 engine to run javascript and talk to those native platforms so the javascript development development process has to do with Node and Node is fully supported on ARM as well. So we're good with mobile. Of course, if you write completely native code, you're all set there too. Now, when I'm developing mobile apps and I do API testing, I use Postman a lot. Postman is a program that lets you call APIs and store your API endpoints in a project. Really cool program. There's alternatives out there, but Postman is fully supported on ARM. So I'm good there. Docker is the next one I use. And I use Docker for another one of my projects, which is a web based project. So I have uh, a web application talking to a MySQL database there as well. Everything is spun up in Docker and Docker is fully ARM supported. No surprise there. All right, now Python. This one is complicated. So I use Miniconda to manage my environments and that one is fully ARM supported now as of May 2022. So you can run Python and Python projects on Apple Silicon natively. However, many people use different libraries that they bring in. And there's a lot of pre-compiled libraries that you use in your Python projects. And those pre-compiled libraries could be not yet available for ARM. Now, some of these are open source libraries. For example, NumPy is a very popular one. And I believe that there might be ARM versions available. Make sure to check the latest in the documentation for each one of those libraries. But you can also compile those yourself on an Apple Silicon machine, which will give you a local instance that is fully Apple Silicon compatible. So yeah, some of those libraries you might run into might be a little of a pain, but you can do it. And there might be libraries that are built for only x64 that are closed source in which case you'll have to look at that separately and judge your own situation at that point. Now, the one workflow that I could not transfer over yet, yet, is my .NET development. Now, you might say, Alex, wait a minute, I can do that and I can do it just fine on Apple Silicon machine. And you'd be right, since .NET have full ARM architecture support and tools like the .NET CLI and Visual Studio for Mac and the popular JetBrains Rider IDE that you all keep yelling at me about. Yes, I've tried it, it's great, okay? Let's move on. <laughs> Also, let's not forget plugins for VS Code, which do exist. It's not as smooth as using Visual Studio, but you can get away with using VS Code for .NET development. But still, I'm a creature of habit. And you know what they say about your favorite hammer and how you always tend to use your favorite hammer? Okay, uh, maybe that's not really a saying, but I think you know what I mean. Visual Studio, 2022, the proper Visual Studio that runs on Windows. It offers a ton of tools in the IDE and I'm really used to it. So I'm a bit too lazy to switch, but I might not have to switch since uh, VS 2022 Preview 17.3 supports ARM now. And I have a video on that, I'll link to it down below. Although it's still in preview and it has limited workflows, you can check out my recent video and tests on that. It means that the light at the end of the tunnel is getting really close and my iMac might move out of my office for good. I'll just put it in the other room. Now, when working with .NET and the Visual Studio ecosystem, there's still SQL Server to deal with. One of the commenters pointed out that I could use my cheap a MacBook Air that I bought to host SQL Server when I'm doing local development, but yeah, you know, 
I can also do the same thing with the cloud. For now, I haven't seen any plans on converting SQL Server to ARM. Let me know in the comments if you heard otherwise. But of course, there are other database solutions out there like Azure or non-SQL Server related databases. Now, if you use other SQL Server engines like SQL Server Analysis Services or Integration Services, then you're kind of stuck on X64 for the time being. So those are my workflows and how I've transitioned them over to Apple Silicon completely or not completely, almost completely. <laughs> As for which specific machines I use and which processors, I constantly try different ones here on this channel. So if you haven't seen those, make sure you check those videos out. And I try to do a good mix of different technologies that developers tend to work with. So if you like that kind of content, be sure to subscribe to the channel and give this video a like if this was helpful to you. And I will see you next time.